Thank you for joining us today. My name is Trevor Ginther and what we're going to cover today is how to adjust both manual and automatic slack adjusters. Okay, so now we're going to talk about brake pots. <clears throat> so what I have here is a Type 30 brake pot. We've got your service brake and your spring brake here. So when I talk about a Type 30, what that means is the diaphragm in here is 30 square inches. Okay, you're going to have Type 20, 24, uh, Type 30, 36. You can have all sorts of types uh, and that just tells you the configuration inside the pot. So this is a Type 30 and what that means is again the diaphragm is 30 square inches. Uh, this configuration, your adjustment limit for the brake is 2 inches. So when I'm saying that, uh, your travel should be no more than 2 inches. Okay, in reality we want you to be around an inch and a half, somewhere in there, okay? So, we'll talk about your uh, service side. So when you apply the foot brake, you're gonna get air pressure in here. It's gonna work on this side of the diaphragm, it's gonna push that way. And uh, the pressure you put on the foot brake is gonna be mirrored in here. You're gonna apply the foot brake and then you're gonna have brake starting to come on. So let's say you make a panic stop there's an accident in front of you or something of that nature. Uh, let's say you make a 100 pound panic stop, air pressure goes in, diaphragm gets hit with 100 PSI, brakes come on. So to do the math for the force on that, you go 30 times 100 is 3,000. So what that means is you have 3,000 pounds of force uh, applying your foot brake. So that's a lot of force. Um, nowadays you can haul a lot heavier loads just because the braking systems can take that much more force and heat, okay? Uh, also, with the service side, is you're gonna have a color on the push rod. Some of them will be red, some will be orange. What that means, if this push rod, if you're starting to see red on the outside of the brake pot, that means your brake uh, is at its max stroke. So that means you're not getting braking force if that's out of the pot. So usually what happens there is A, brake linings are down, um, you have something something wrong with the interior of the brake or the foundation brake on the truck um, or you just out of adjustment or the slack adjuster has issues. Okay, so now we're going to touch on the spring brake side. So with the spring brake, as you're driving down the road, you're going to have air pressure come in this port here. It's going to work on this side of the diaphragm, compress that spring, you're going down the road, there's no brake application. This is always staying off. If you park, all the air gets exhausted out of this side. This spring was going to expand, and then push rod comes out, holds your brakes, your brakes are dynamited, you're parked. Um, so what we're going to do a little bit more down the road here is we're going to talk about the spring. So this is a spring I have here. So as you can see, that gets compressed a fair bit. We're going to talk a bit about how to cage a brake. Okay. And this is just a cutaway we have. So this would be like this, sitting inside the pot. Move that out of the way. So you have the diaphragm here, air pressure comes in. You get the diaphragm, pushes on the piston. This is basically the piston. You apply the brakes, that goes out. Brakes release, that comes back in. Okay, so that's forced back in got a light spring in here okay all right so we're gonna move on we'll talk a bit more about brakes in a little bit so I just wanted to uh, show you a little demo so this is the spring off uh, park side of your brake pot so I'm 200 pounds and I can't do anything to that so I just wanted to demonstrate that just to show you how much force there is so if you ever see a brake pot that's cracked or eroded in the back end stay well away Okay, now we're going to talk about caging a brake. Uh, some of the reasons why you'd want to cage a brake, let's say your diaphragm ruptures, uh, your brake supply, you want to cage it, uh, or an airline, let's say an airline ruptures, it gets cut. So to cage a brake, you take your uh, caging bolt out, be on the outside of your pot, stick it in the end, and what you're going to do is rotate it. This one you rotate it to the uh, clockwise position, and then you take your nut, you thread it on to the actual bolt itself, you turn it clockwise, and turning it clockwise, you compress the spring brake, uh, then you're free to go to the mechanic shop and get things fixed. So what we're 
we're going to do now, this is a type 30 brake pot. I'm just going to talk about how to identify uh, what size of brake pot you have. Okay, so this one's type 30, uh, easy way. This is the uh, application side, so when you apply your foot brake, uh, this part of the brake will apply. It's a type 30, so it's a 30 square inch uh, diaphragm within this one. Uh, the other way to figure it out would be sometimes there's going to be a tag right here. That tag is going to tell you if it's a type 30 long stroke. It'll be 2.5 inches or 3.0 inches depending on the size of uh, the brake pot. Uh, another area to look at is your, is your ports. So with the ports, um, it's going to tell you the stroke. So this, like, this one here is a type 30-30, 2.5 inches. Um, another way to tell if it is um, a long stroke or regular is if you have square ports. So those are the different ways you can tell um, what style of brake pot it is. So uh, type 20 brake pot, the adjustment limit is inch and three quarters. A type 24 is also inch and three quarters. And a type 30 like this one, the adjustment limit would be two inches. So if I have a brake pot, if I'm doing an inspection on a truck roadside, um, I'm formerly a transport officer. So what I'll use is a brake inspection tool. And what I do is I place it on the service side of the brake on this clamp and this arm will identify what size chamber it is. So this is a type 30. So again I use this if I'm uh, roadside or in the bush inspecting trucks and I can't make out what size of pot it is. So this will let me know what size of pot and also let me know what the adjustment limit is on it. So this is just a quick, quick reference guide. Okay so now we're going to talk about slack adjusters. Okay so We've got a manual, and then I've got three automatics. So with the manual, manual slack adjusters cannot be put on a vehicle that was manufactured after May 31st, 1996. Okay, so with the manual slack adjuster, just like it says, it's manual. You have to go underneath the vehicle and set these up, okay? Depends on the train you're in, the roads, the, uh, the hills. You might have to go in there once a day, once a week. Uh, so with the manual slack adjuster, the key thing with them, with them is when you're adjusting it, you have to push down the lock sleeve. You adjust it up, let the lock sleeve pop back into place. Um, you got to keep it well greased. Uh, sometimes over time, if you're not keeping it well greased, this can stay in. And if the lock sleeve stays in, uh, the brake can back off. Um, also with the, the manual slack adjuster, um, you might have to adjust it daily depending on the road conditions, weekly. It all depends the road conditions you're in. Off. Okay, so the key thing with any slack adjuster is grease, maintenance, um, especially the manual, you have to set them up. So we're gonna talk more in the video how to set it up actually on a truck, okay? So now we're gonna get into the automatics. Um, so we have one here. For adjustment on this one, you have what's called a pull pole. So with this, this has to be popped out about uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch. You can use a screwdriver or there's a special tool on the market. We can show that later. That gets popped out. There's the adjusting head, the adjusting nut. Okay, so this one's an automatic. Then you have a gunite. This is an automatic also. Okay, with this one to adjust it up, you adjust it up here. Um, this one would be what's called a stroke sensing. So it'll adjust up the brake. The more stroke you have, the more adjustment it'll give you. Okay. And this one here is uh, a Haldex. And this one would be considered a clearance sensing uh, automatic slack adjuster. Again, the adjusting head, grease nipple. So what we'll do when we get in the field is we'll get a little bit more details, how to adjust them up, what to look for. And that's the slack adjusters we'll talk about. Okay, so now we're going to do a brake adjustment with the manual slack adjuster. We've got a Type 30 brake pot. No spring brakes on this one, just a service brake. So what we're going to do first is you need to make sure that you uh, press in the lock collar. And we're going to turn uh, the adjusting nut clockwise. The big thing you got to watch is you want to take the inspection cover off or take the uh, inspection plug out watch to make sure your shoes are contacting the drum to make sure you're going in the right direction. So 
so we'll take it till it goes tight. Okay, there we go, we've got contact. So now what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back a quarter turn. There we go. So now we're gonna measure the free stroke, just with hand pressure with the brake buddy. So with free stroke, uh, with the Type 30 brake, we should have less than three quarters of an inch. So we'll just give it a pull. There we go, we got about a half inch. Okay, so that brake should be set up. Now we're going to give the brake drum a spin to make sure we have no drag. Excellent. We have brakes that are adjusted now. Uh, what we're going to talk about is snow conditions and driving in them. Uh, what happens in the wintertime with a fresh snowfall is you're going to get a buildup of snow in between the uh, brake shoe and the drum that will turn to ice. Uh, when you need the brakes going down a hill or a panic situation, you'll have no brakes. So what you need to do, always remember, is you need to drag your brakes every now and then. You're going to have to apply your brakes both on your truck and trailer just to keep things warm and heated. That way that ice doesn't build up and you always have brakes. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a brake adjustment with a manual slack adjuster with a Type 30 pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning the adjusting nut clockwise. Okay, so what we have is the cam is going to turn in rotation of brake application. And also we're going to see that the shoe is going to contact the drum. Okay, so we know we're tight. Okay, I'm going to back it off quarter turn. Okay, there we go. So now what I'm going to do is just a measuring device. We're going to stick this on here and we're going to see the free stroke here with applied air. Okay, so we have inch and a quarter. Excellent. So another thing we'll talk about is the inside brake angle here. So when the brake's applied, you get the most force at 90 degrees. That's your inside angle. So with the CVIP regulation, that's within Alberta here, um, a brake will fail if it's under 80 and over 100 degrees. So the optimum angle is always 90 degrees. Some applications with pots and slack adjusters don't allow you to get that 90 degrees, so that's fine, there's leeway there. But an optimum angle is 90 degrees applied. Um, then you're gonna transfer all that force from the diaphragm, push rod, slack adjuster, cam, right in the brakes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust an automatic slack adjuster. We've got a type 24 brake pot. It's a long stroke. The stroke limit is 2.5 inches. The adjustment limit is 2 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, adjust it. I got a uh, 7 16 wrench. Going to put it on the adjusting bolt. And with that, I'm going to verify the direction. They always want to turn in the direction of brake application and where the shoes contact the drum. So with this, I've already verified through the inspection hole that I'm going the right direction. So when you're going, another way to tell that you're going in the right direction is you're not gonna have resistance. It's gonna move free. So you take it all the way, just like that, until it gets firm. Okay, I verified it, we've went in the right direction. Now I'm gonna go counterclockwise. You're gonna hear a ratchet sound, which is normal. And we go back a half turn. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Okay, so that's a ratcheting mechanism you hear. Okay, there we go, we have our half turn. So now what we're going to do is fire up the truck, air it up. We have the tires chalked up. We're going to release the brakes so we don't compound the brakes. I'm going to apply the foot brake. And I'm going to have a mark on the push rod and we'll be able to see what kind of stroke we have. I'm underneath the triaxle trailer here and what we're going to do is adjust this uh, right side brake. It's an automatic slack adjuster. It's got a sensing arm for stroke. Uh, we've got a type 30 pot with the adjustment limit of 2 inches. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the adjusting nut clockwise, uh, verify that the uh, shoes are going towards the drum. So we're going to take it all the way in, then we're going to back it off a half turn, going to apply the brakes, and then we're going to see where the stroke's set at. So when you go clockwise, another indicator you're going in the right direction is you're not going to meet resistance, you're not going to have a ratchet sound. Okay, so now the brakes are tied up against the drum. So now we're going to go back a half a turn. So I'm going to go back a quarter at a time. Okay, that ratchet sound is normal. Okay, so again we got it backed off a half. So now what we'll do is apply the brakes. Okay, what we've just done is we've adjusted this brake. It's an automatic slack adjuster. Type 30 pot, adjustment limit is two inches. So what I did is I took the adjuster nut, went clockwise all the way till the uh, shoes contacted the drum. Then I backed it off a half a turn, applied the foot brake, and we measured the stroke, and the stroke is now an inch and an eighth. So with an automatic slack adjuster on the Type 30, you're going to want to keep it under two inches. Uh, the less stroke you have, the more force you have on the brake, the less chances of bottoming out. Another thing I've verified is I've looked down in the inspection hole on the uh, dust cover. I've verified the shoe is contacting the drum, so we've adjusted it in the right direction. So again, anytime you adjust a or an automatic slack adjuster, write it down in your trip inspection, what location, what axle. Uh, you need to tell your supervisor or the mechanic Again, the manufacturer does not want automatic slack adjusters adjusted. Uh, the only time to do that would be an emergency situation to get back uh, to a safe location to get it repaired. Okay, now what we're going to talk about is this automatic slack adjuster. Uh, what I'm going to show you on the bench here is how to adjust it, uh, what to do, what to look for. Okay, so what you want to do is this has what's called a pull pawl and that has to be pulled out approximately uh, 2 30 seconds of an inch. So I have this tool, it just slides in and it holds that out, basically releases a, uh, a cog internally. You've got the square release on the bottom and it gets turned counterclockwise. If you see the uh, teeth in there, they move clockwise. So as you're doing that, you're adjusting up the brake, okay? So this is one of the only styles that you have to pull this out before you adjust. The other styles, uh, you don't have to pull anything out. So now we're in the cab of the truck. We're just going to talk about a little bit how to adjust automatic slack adjusters from the cab, basically. So you're going to use your foot brake. Uh, you're going to make 90 to 100 pound brake application. That'll set up the brakes. Uh, most automatic slack adjusters won't set up unless you have 90 to 100 pounds uh, and that's only going to happen in a panic situation or if you're intentional about it so when you're at a red light or maybe if you're in the block getting loaded just apply your foot brake 90 100 pounds things should set up and you should be good to go uh, schedule one states that all brakes the stroke has to be checked every 24 hours so an easy way to do that is to uh, put a brake stroke indicator on your push rods have your brakes all released, your tires are chalked. Then when I do that when I'm inspecting trucks, I just use a pry bar, wedge it under the brake. It'll give me maybe 40 to 50 pounds brake application. And then I'll go around the truck and measure all the stroke of the brakes. Um, for trip inspection, you don't have to necessarily go under the trucks and measure everything. You just have to visually see what the stroke is because in the schedule it says if one breaks out of adjustment that vehicle is parked. So this is just a quick easy way, whether you use a pry bar or some other device, but remember that if you don't do that and it breaks out of adjustment you get pulled over, you can get a $230 fine. Or if you fail to produce a trip inspection it's another $230, okay? Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about required attention items and out of service items from the CVSA inspection guide. So required attention items. 
So some required attention items would be, um, let's say on a drive axle, you have brake lining with a two block system like this, uh, the lining's under a quarter inch, required attention. Let's say if you have a loose brake pot, that can be required attention. Out of service, uh, if you have 20% or more of brakes out of adjustment, puts you out of service. So what that would be, so on a six axle unit, you'd have 12 brakes, and if you have three brakes or more, that's 20% or greater, the whole unit's out of service. Let's say if you have a Super B, so that's eight axles, 16 brakes, four brakes out of adjustment, that puts you out of service. Um, on a steering axle, if you have on a steering axle, any brake with a two pad system like this, with less than a quarter inch brake lining, that would put you out of service. Also, on any axle group, if you have a leaking wheel seal. So a leaking wheel seal, you'll be able to see that on the inside of your tire. Your brakes are gonna have contamination and there's gonna be oil dripping out of the bottom of your uh, brake drum. So those are just some things to remember uh, when looking at brakes. Thanks for joining us today. We covered how to adjust both manual and automatic slack adjusters. Hopefully we've answered all your questions and now you feel confident in brake adjustment.